First of all, I'd like to say hello to all of my friends and to all of my many enemies. Once again, this is another episode of Roosevelt Sounds Off. And on this morning, tonight, uh, whenever you happen to be watching this video, this is the second part of my Cook County Beverage Tax Trilogy. And on today, October 10th, 2017, I have some good news to bring to all of you all out there who live in Cook County, even all of you all who don't live in Cook County, who want to find out what's going on with us. Listen, listen, to this morning, um, it, it was a, a major journey. I got up very, very early this morning and I um, got on the metro train leaving my house and I went downtown and I went to the Cook County um, building and it was like Mission Impossible getting in there on the fifth floor because it was just so many people. I mean, oh, it was a lot of people. I mean, I sat around there and everything for a while, even took a little bit of video and everything, which I'm going to be showing you several clips in a minute. I'm going to explain all the clips I'm going to be showing you. And um, I had to pretty much like stand around and everything all day because it was so many people that we couldn't they, they could only let so many people into the room where the commissioners were, where the hearing was going on um, at a time. So I stood around there waiting in line and everything for a couple of hours. But in the end, I am glad that I stayed. At first, I almost got discouraged around like one or two. I almost got ready to go home. But I am so glad that I stayed because I believe that by me staying, I was able to get into the hearing or the last part of it to actually witness history here in Cook County where the Cook County commissioners, they voted 15 to 1, maybe 15 to 2 to repeal the Cook County beverage tax here in Cook County. I am so, so happy about that. And some of the clips I'm going to show you um, is going to be basically the clips of how many people were there. I took like a couple of shots and stuff of the people who came out. It was a lot of people who came out before, you know, who are for and against the tax. And, you know, there was a whole lot of like public speakers because today was the day that the public was were, were, um, going to speak. So it was a whole lot of public speakers, a couple of organizations that were represented, the um, National Heart Foundation. Um, they were wearing red T-shirts. And then you also had some other people who were wearing blue T-shirts that said, you know, good health for kids. And I guess these were some other people who were against it. And of course, the traditional can the tax, you know, which were the group opposed to the tax and supporting the appeal of the Cook County Sweet and Beverage Tax. They wore their white T-shirts. And I mean, it, it was nice. You just got to see these clips. So these next following clips I'm going to play you. These are going to be kind of long. Because the first clip or two is going to be of the people. How many? I'm going to show you how this was like very, very important to a whole lot of people. And how many people actually came out to support or be against. Because they might have had a different opinion of this beverage tax. And I'm also going to show you a little bit of the testimony from some of the people or some of the public speakers, some for, some against. There were a whole lot of store owners and restaurant owners that were repre uh, represented because some of the store owners and restaurant owners were talking about how this tax actually hurt their business because you know, they're saying that many people, instead of buying their going to restaurants or instead of going shopping here in Cook County, that they're just saving up whatever little money that they're having and going across the border to Lake County, Indiana, or either they're going staying here in Illinois, but yet they're going to Will County or DuPage County. And instead of just getting sweet drinks in those counties, no, they're buying everything. They're buying their groceries. They're buying their pop. They're buying their alcohol. They're buying their cigarettes because taxes are just too high here in this area of Cook County. 
So it's a couple of store owners, a couple of restaurant owners that you're going to see. And I also have a, some testimony of some of the commissioners who were there. People like Commissioner John Daly, people like Commissioner Fritchie. And even a little bit, even though I got cut off because I took so much video, you all, that I ran out of space on the phone. I mean, after I ran out of space on the phone, I couldn't do anything else. It cut off during the time that Commissioner Deborah Sims was speaking. And Commissioner Sims, today, she actually did something that actually surprised me and made me much more impressed with her than I actually ever was because if anybody has watched my videos on this particular subject you know that I have raked her over the coals the one or two times I've talked about this issue on my YouTube program so I'm gonna play for you these long clips so just bear with it and I'm gonna come back with my ending commentary and this is day two of the beverage tax trilogy thanks everybody for tuning right on in so let me play for do uh, play for you those clips and then i'm going to come back with my conclusion of this wonderful day here in Cook County. I want everybody on YouTube to see the amount of people that's down here on today on Tuesday, October 10th, 2017. We're on the fifth floor of City Hall located at 118 North Clark in downtown Chicago. Hopefully I can get in. <laughs> people it was so many people that I couldn't get into the Cook County Board meeting it's a little bit after 10 30 so we're all outside still outside the door but they got what's going on on the inside on loudspeaker there's a lot of people still here a little bit after 10 30.
the hardworking residents of Worth who are literally being forced out of Cook County and out of Illinois because they cannot afford to live here. The curve I gave in my hand is called the Lafford Curve. It's named after Arthur Lafford. We're moving up some of you all, and this is the mayor of Worth speaking. We're not in the building there yet. That was the mayor of Worth saying that we can't afford any Cook County. We can't afford to keep this Cook County beverage tax up. Mayor, again, welcome in. Abdul Saleh. Abdul Saleh. Abdul Saleh. Abdul Saleh. The next speaker is Frank Sines from Papa Frank's Euros. Frank Sines. Frank Sines. The next speaker is Jesse Singh from Lansing Sitco. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm here on behalf of the people of Cook County, the residents of Cook County. I've been a business owner in the Cook County for the past 20 plus years. I'm not here for myself, but I'm here for the people because I listen to the people every day. When they come to my business, we sit there, we talk and everything. I listen to what they go through every day. We see this tax has done a terrible job for our business and for our community because I'm right on the borderline and people are leaving everything on my counter and they're going right across to Indiana. So we are losing a lot of revenue. There are other ways I would say to the commissioners, you need to sit with the business owners. There's another way we can find a revenue for the county. And we're willing to do that rather than keep hurting the people of Cook County. We pay the highest property taxes we pay the highest sales tax, and now here comes the sugar tax. We mm -hmm. need to repeal this tax, Amen. not yesterday, not tomorrow, but today. So we need to repeal this, and our arms are open on behalf of the business owners. We can sit together and work out a better comprehensive way we can get more revenue for our county. Thank you. <laughs> the next speaker is Tariq El Nasir from Noble Street her. Pantry. Tariq El Nasir. The next speaker is Carol Bowger. <laughs> Slide it down. Slide it down. Of your constituents, not to vote for the morality of a health-related issue, 
that y'all know isn't a health related issue. And it only serves to pick working families and Cook County retailers where it hurts in the financial pocket. I'm not here representing Big Soda. I'm here representing myself and my Cook County business. No one's paying me to take time away from my business today, but that's how important this fight is to me. As Chairman Daly was quoted as saying last week, people are being taxed out of the state, out of the county. The public is saying there are too many taxes and I'm tired of it. My husband and I have both lived in Cook County our entire lives, but we are nearly the only ones left here from our immediate families. Just in our two families alone, there are 10 individual family members that are, have already chosen to move out of Cook County and are now married, raising families What's elsewhere. There? Our own daughters, ages 21 and 24, are on the cusp of their adult lives. Although they both hold good paying jobs here in Cook County, neither one plans to plant any permanent roots here. It hasn't occurred to them that this is a great place to live and raise their families, and it's a common sentiment that people of all ages are beginning to question. It should worry you that out-migration and population in Cook County that was always exactly. so strong in 2015 and 2016, and that was before major property and sales tax hikes, and before the student leverage tax. So commissioners, ask yourself, what about Cook County could possibly entice people to move here now? Certainly Nothing. not a government that can't be fiscally responsible. Thank Speaker. Madam Chair, it's Adriana Marquesi. Adriana Marquesi from Home Team Pizza. Next speaker is Saeed Salem from Big Salem's Mini Mart. Saeed Salem. The next speaker is Syed Sadula. Michelle. Syed Sadula. The next speaker is Sam Layla from Homewood DP. Homewood DP. The next speaker is Sheikh Hussein from West Loop Mart. Sheikh Hussein. The next speaker is Cheryl Chalmers. Cheryl Chalmers. The next speaker is Sam Dinka from 7-Eleven. Sam Dinka. The next speaker is Kyle Kelly from the Cajun Connoisseur. Kyle Kelly. The next speaker is Ron Chandler. Ron Chandler. The next speaker is Sajal Patel. Ron Chandler, thank you. Good afternoon. After listening to the, some of the presentations, I would think the soda beverage is really uh, almost so detrimental that it would be illegal. And we know we really have to fight for Give me a on. break. But really, think about it. Give me a break. Um, one gentleman said that they should, that the boy should have a tax so it can influence our behavior. Do you really want that? I go to my personal doctor for that decision. Actually, she's been trying for the last 25 years to get me to cut back on another beverage that I prefer. To <laughs> <laughs> and even with that, after she said that, I still make the final decision. So I know if I don't let her make the final decision, I don't want to rely or any elected official. Secondly, what really disturbed me, I was in the store and I purchased some items and saw this. At the same time, looked at a newspaper and saw a big item. Employees at the Cook County Jail signed it in as even. I, I know Tom Goss' re representative was here. So you know what that tells me? It's still waste. Days after sporting events, they take off. That is waste that we are paying for. Inefficiency. If you are asking us to pay it last week, right across the board, small businesses, mid-sized business, large business across any industry, if they have to tighten their belt, do what they can. They do not, they do not increase the prices. You don't increase the prices. They can't, or you'll go out of business. And so for those, certainly there may be a loss of jobs. If across the state, if across the county and the city, we reduce taxes, businesses will come and say, these people are not entitled to county and state jobs. One minute. Reduce the taxes, private businesses will come, and again, you look at the dynamics even with the transportation industry.
They're always different dynamic changes. They're not entitled. You overtax us, mismanage the, the money, there is no more money. Mm -hmm. So if you have to get jobs in other industries, that's the choice. Repeal the tax now. Thank you. 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 The next speaker is Chris Sturgio, Marketplace at Oakton. Chris Sturgio. The next speaker is Yusuf Abdullah from Seven Seas Food and Meat. Yusuf Abdullah. The next speaker is Walter Davis, of Son of a Dish Catering. <laughs> dish. You dish. son of a dish. <laughs> the next speaker, Madam Chair, is Walter Davis. As the executive president, Tony Preckwinkle has to make very difficult decisions, and I respect that fact, but I simply disagree with this particular decision and outcome, as do the majority of people in Cook County. My commitment to health issues during my career has been unwavering. In my office are awards to the American Heart Association, Respiratory Health Association, American Cancer Society, among others but I don't believe that this tax will accomplish the benefits it claims it will, and neither do the overwhelming number of constituents I have the privilege to represent. I represent a district that stretches from Michigan Avenue to the western border of the city. It includes neighborhoods ranging from Little North to Lincoln Square to Portage Park. I came out against this tax because too many of my constituents across my district are suffering from a different health issue, tax fatigue. They've been stricken with a massive property tax increase diagnosed with an increase in their water bills, suffered a tax on shopping bags, and a relapse of having an increase in the state income tax. Compounding their financial ailments, just today the Chicago Public Schools announced that they are raising Chicago property taxes by $225 million, an increase of over 8%. Simply put, the financial health of too many of my constituents is in critical condition, and I cannot agree conscience add to their suffering. To date, nobody else has discussed the glaring hypocrisy of this tax. Just last year, this board approved a 10-year contract to provide exclusive rights to sell beverages at all Cook County properties and at all Forest Preserve properties, properties that are overwhelmingly used by families. A contract worth over $4 million. A contract with Pepsi. It is simply disingenuous for this board to tell people not to drink sugary drinks while at the same time taking millions of dollars to give them access to those very same drinks. Mm -hmm. But today's vote is about more than repealing a tax. It's a rare moment where the people of Cook County not only let their voices be heard, but more importantly are having their voices result in action. As a result, the vote that is upcoming is nothing less than historic. Make no mistake, when this tax is repealed, very difficult decisions will need to be made. Decisions that will impact the residents of Cook County, and while myself and my colleagues on the board are prepared to make those tough choices, we must reiterate that the separately elected officials have a crucial role in this process. They know their offices better than anyone else, and they must participate in good faith as we work together to make county government do even more with even less. To date, this tax has resulted in millions of dollars being spent on television ads and mailers to persuade people's opinions. It has resulted in countless dollars being spent in stores outside of Cook County. My wish is that the money and attention that has been given to this issue would also be given to other issues. Attention and action upon issues upon which we all agree. That we would spend as much attention and money on bullets going into our children as we're spending on Gatorade going into our children. On the need for after school programs and other initiatives to reduce our murder rate. We each owe a duty to our constituents some of us may differ as to how our respective duties dictate how we vote. I believe my duty is to support the repeal of this tax, and that's why I'm a sponsor of the repeal. Mr. Chairman, people of Cook County, for these reasons and others, I support the measure, continue my initial opposition to the tax, and we'll, go, and we'll be voting for the repeal of the speaker number six. Commissioner Porter. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, distinguished colleagues and citizens of Cook County. 11 months ago, when the unfair sweetened beverage tax was enacted, the people spoke out. They spoke out in overwhelming opposition to a measure that harmed consumers 
and businesses alike. A measure that is regressive, a measure that makes our small businesses less competitive, a measure that reaches into the wallets of our citizens to close a budget gap that could be solved through a combination of cooperation, creativity, and discipline. The people spoke out, and today with this vote, we can say to our constituents, you have been heard. Often the people we represent look at county government and believe that their elected officials are more interested in serving a political agenda than they are in serving the people who sent them here. With this vote, we have the opportunity to send a different message. We have the opportunity to say that this government belongs to you, that county government is a democracy, a government of the people, by the people, and yes, for the people. Our history is full of examples of what can happen when our leaders engage in taxation without representation. It's a story as old as our American Revolution. It doesn't matter whether you tax tea or tax sugar. Eventually, people get fed up. Eventually, people say enough is enough. That is what happened here. The truth is that nearly 90% of the Cook County residents want this tax gone. That truth is incontrovertible. Malice may attack it. Ignorance may deride it. You can bring in $11 million in outside special interest money to try to spin it. But at the end of the day, the truth is the truth and it still remains. You cannot suppress it and today we must address it. This tax has divided this board for too long. The attempts to frame this as a public health issue have hijacked the focus that we ought to be placing on the most urgent of public health issues, the epidemic of gun violence that continues to plague Chicago and Cook County. With this divisive issue behind us, we now have the opportunity to finally, at long last, come together. We have an obligation to seize that opportunity. We owe it to the taxpayers of Cook County to work together and close the 2018 budget gap by enacting long needed fiscal reforms, not by raising more taxes. President Preckwinkle's proposed 2018 budget eliminates 254 vacant and open full-time positions. That leaves more than 1,500 vacant and open positions in the budget. Our health and hospital systems is owed $90 million in accounts receivables. These accounts receivables should be sold. This money is owed to the county by insurance companies and patients who can afford to pay. Finally, we must make one thing crystal clear. The time for sacred cows and slush funds in Cook County and the Cook County budget is over. As Chairman Daly has pointed out, in a $5.4 billion budget, the opportunity to achieve savings and close the gap without taxes is there. If only we come together. Through a combination of vision, cooperation, and discipline, we can meet our obligations without decimating public health or public safety. I look forward to working with my fellow commissioners, the administration, and other independent elected officials of the county to get the job done for the people who sent us here. I urge and I vote in favor of repeal of this sweetened beverage tax. I yield back. Gainer's eye, Commissioner Garcia. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to take a uh, moment to just say the following. One, uh, the residents of Cook County have sent a strong message to the board about how they felt about this tax increase, about this revenue measure that we utilized to attempt to balance the budget for 2017 and 2018. Through this vote, we're saying that we hear them. However, 
as a county board and as we begin consideration and debate around the 2018 budget, it still remains true that the budget that we ultimately enact for 2018 will be a statement mm -hmm. about morality, oh, about values, about yeah. compassion, or yeah. the lack thereof. Yeah. So the challenge yeah. is now clearly yeah. in our yeah. court to examine yeah. every possible yeah. solution yeah. that we have to yeah. the budget yeah. deficit that we are looking and staring at yeah. in 2018. Yeah. That will include structural reforms in yeah. Cook yeah. County. Yeah. Most commissioners have a keen sense about where we can cut without affecting frontline services. It will also entail looking at consolidation of departments, greater collaboration with the city of Chicago to see what can be condensed and consolidated. And it will also entail making hard decisions about where else we can reduce expenditures that are no longer to be tolerated oh, in Cook okay, County. Yeah, I, and I finally, understand. we still will face a revenue challenge to ensure that we provide services to the neediest in Cook County, whether it's the health and hospital system, whether it's public safety or other important services that people who are less advantaged in society will still look to Cook County to make a reality. Today, I will vote for this effort because a, a strong message has been sent to this board by the residents of Cook County and the people of the 7th District. Chairman, yeah. thank you for the meeting today. I voted no on the sale on the toll tax, and I'm going to vote yes on the repeal, and I would have done that even if I lived in the middle of the county, instead of on the border of the county like I do. My, my northern boundary line is Lakeshore Road. I am two miles from McKinley County. <coughs> miles from King County, I'm 20 minutes from Wisconsin. So my constituents have all kinds of options in the water here. So this is the right thing to do. And I'm really excited about this budget process. As has been said by many of my colleagues, you know, we don't have <coughs> choice budget. We don't have options. There's no revenue. We're gonna have to do right size this government, do some innovations. It's gonna be it should be an exciting six weeks. I look forward to working with all of you on this. You Mr. Uh, Chairman get to chair the meeting. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and then I vote aye on the state. Commissioner Goslin is aye. Commissioner Moody. First of all, I'd like to say thank you so much, Commissioner Morrison. He showed a lot of uh, leadership. He made the calls. Uh, and uh, I'm very, very thankful for that. I think we should all say thank you. Um, I'm a Cook County Commissioner. I am a, a legislator, and I represent a district. Um, and that being said, when the majority of your district, I think the last poll taken, 85% of my district was in favor of repealing this, the sweet beverage tax, you have to listen. I've spent many, many meetings with many of my mayors. Uh, they've, they've consistently pointed out, especially in the Southland, how damaging this tax is to businesses in their municipalities. And they have a very, very difficult job. Uh, not my job to make their job more difficult. It's my job <coughs> to make their job easier. And I want to do that. I uh, also want to be added as a sponsor to this uh, legislation. And uh, Chairman and I vote aye. Commissioner Moody is aye. Commissioner Moore. Mm -hmm. I'd like to take my minute. When this tax was proposed, I don't think anybody would disagree with me that the county does provide some of the most vital services to some of the most vulnerable people in Cook County. In order to provide these services, it is extremely costly. My concern has and always will be to protect the people who I represent by protecting the services of the county from going away. Cook County saves lives. We have let this tax out the mission of this body. The community understands that it takes revenue to continue to provide these life-saving services. In my district alone, 21,000 residents have used the services of Stroger Hospital just this year alone. I can remember when Provident Hospital was founded by Dr. Daniel Hale Williams, an African-American surgeon who was credited for performing the first open, successful open-heart surgery 
He opened this hospital particularly for African Americans who were turned away from other hospitals because of the color of their skin. Provident was once a thriving hospital with 200 beds. It has been cut to 13 beds. A hospital who no longer accepts ambulances because we've eliminated the emergency room. I can also remember when Oak Forest was a thriving hospital that provided services to people in the south suburbs. A hospital that once had a thriving mental health division as well as an emergency room and beds for patients. I remember taking people to Oak Forest Hospital who were suffering from mental illness. A personal friend of mine. Quietly, Cook County has cut those services as well through the budget cut. The doors are due to be closed, the lights turned off, and the hospital to be torn down. But we don't talk about that. The doors, it will always sound good when an elected official stands up and says, all we have to do is cut, 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 cut. But not at the expense of the poor and the disenfranchised. I am never comfortable passing any tax never comfortable voting for revenue, but I've shown that I will take the hard vote to protect the services of the community if need be. But first and foremost, I must always remember I was elected to represent my community. Mm -hmm. And as the duly elected official of my community, I have to champion their wishes. My community agrees with me that we need the vital services of Cook County. <coughs> they do not agree with taxing beverages is the way to save those services. We, the county board, will have to find alternatives to this tax without losing the vital services. And without that, uh, I respectfully cast my vote to repeal the sweet and beverage tax and to vote to sunset it on December 1st, 2017. So I'll vote aye. Commissioner Moore is aye. Commissioner Morrison is aye. Commissioner Schneider. Chairman Daly, thank you very much for being a wonderful meeting today. I'm deeply grateful for the outcome of today's meeting, but to all of you, now the really hard work begins right now. I look forward to working with my colleagues in a bipartisan fashion to balance our budget and provide the vastly needed services Commissioner Moore eloquently just spoke about to those of us in the county that want to provide the necessary service to the most vulnerable, vulnerable people of our county. I vote on. Commissioner Schneider is aye. Commissioner Silvestri? I think the mission of all of us as county commissioners and anyone in government is to provide the resources and the leadership to perform the functions of the government role. In this case, the Lord I was eloquently stated by Commissioner Moore and by others. But it's also our responsibility to remember what the people who elected us and brought us here want from their government. And I think that this is a good example of how all of us have seen what the people want, and that is a fair tax, perhaps, fair revenue sources. And they've said basically this is not a fair revenue source. That is why I opposed this tax in the beginning. I continue to oppose it and vote to repeal it. I vote it. Uh, yes, I'm going to repeal it. Commissioner Silvestri is aye. Vice Chairman Sims. Thank you. I'll take one minute. Here we go. Yeah. <clears throat> First of all, I'd like to say to President Preckwinkle, um, who made a really hard decision in what revenues we were going to go after for this board to balance our budget. She gave us two choices. She gave us property tax, or she gave us the soda tax. As she went around Cook County and talking about this, she said there was also another tax that was put on the table, the sales tax. And there were two commissioners that said, let's do a sales tax. One of those commissioners was my colleague, the other one was myself. I've been on this board long enough to know that we do need revenue. Sitting here today, I had not made a decision until I came into this room today. On okay, night. you just saw all of those long clips. You saw some of the comments from some people in the community for and against. And you saw some of the comments of the commissioners who were there today. Commissioner Sims, Commissioner Fritchie, um, Commissioner Daly, and a few 
others. And one thing I have to say is that I believe that it was a wonderful day here in Cook County. I'm glad that the commissioners, especially Commissioner Sims, heard the voice of the people of Cook County. And I'm glad that they listened. So even though, now it got cut off near the end, but I'm, I can just tell you how it finished. Because I actually did get a chance to even speak personally with Commissioner Sims. And she told me, along with some other nice ladies, that she it kind of hurt her to have to say um, yes to vote for repeal. Because she's saying that how are we going to fund looking at it from the other side now because you know I do like to try to present the other side whenever I can she said that you know how are we gonna fund places like Cook County Hospital and Stroger and Provident and it's a whole lot of jobs that are going to be cut if this tax doesn't you know um, is cut and today when I got home from um, the hearing one of my lodge brothers who called who one time you know he had cancer he called me and told me that he enjoyed my first video but he said that he had to pull my coattails on something so I asked him what and he told me that one of those clinics that they're threatening to close for his treatment he actually has to go to and actually have to attend and he says without this tax you know that's going to cut a vital service even for people like him in his condition of course you know i never knew he went to that clinic i mean i never thought of that kind of a thing so it seems like you know looking at it from both sides it's kind of like a two-edged sword to where no we don't want the beverage tax because we feel that the taxes are just out of control here in Cook County I mean you got high property tax I mean you have even the so-called bag tax now where they make you pay for shopping bags and stuff now I mean we have the sugary drink tax I mean it's like a tax on just even water tax and bottle tax I mean it's taxes just seem like on everything they're about to tax everybody almost out of their minds and a whole lot of people with the taxes have actually moved out of Cook County, have moved to other places like DuPage County, even Indiana, because it's much more cheaper to live than, than um, in Cook County. Because I just think that people are overtaxed, but at the same time, I can understand it um, whenever they're talking about um, trying to find revenue to fund these different programs and everything that they have. And I even played for you a clip of someone or attorney who worked for the public defender's office who actually, because of her job, saved the life of people who were in prison who might have been wrongly convicted. But we, these people who are wrongly convicted, their life never would have been changed if it hadn't been for the public defender's office, which is also paid for with the Cook County Board money. So yes, I can understand that too, but I mean, it just seems like it's just like either way you go, whether you're for or against, it seems like it's just messed up either way. And it's many people you, you, that you heard in the meeting, because in the meeting and everything, even though I'm against this tax and I was for, you know, repeal myself, but I heard a whole lot of good arguments for and even against, you know, looking at the health value for and everything. And I believe that some people, they made some good points, you know, as far as the health wise and, you know, trying to promote everybody to have good health, especially children. But at the same time, like somebody even in the meeting said, I don't know if I got that clip, that somebody giving their child soda popper and everything, that comes from the parent. It has nothing to do with the child. Every single parent governs their own home any kind of way that it is that they want to, and it should not or never be up to the government to determine what it is that we are trying to police, what it is that we eat and drink on a daily basis. That's something that needs to be up to us. But I know at the same time that all of us need to get more healthy, including myself. But I mean, and I know maybe this soda tax has done some good even in, in my life because I noticed that because of it, I have bought less soda.
and I do end up drinking more water and I also have got these little drink packets now that are sugar free but still taste good matter of fact I'm gonna show one to you um, I'm gonna pause this video then I'm gonna be right back okay brothers and sisters I'm back only I came back to show you something I had to go and pause the video for a second in order to get this because I forgot to bring it on when I first started the video but ever since they had this crackdown on the soda tax this is what I've been getting I get these from the dollar store box of these for a dollar each and you see it's the crush orange flavor which is like one of my favorite I also like the pineapple I also like the strawberry and you know a whole lot of different brands and stuff have these little boxes and basically they come like this and basically this is like a sugar free packet because I don't really believe there's any sugar in here only I'm at the read one day get something to be able to read this ingredients on here so I can actually tell whether there's sugar in here or not but what you do you just take this, of course, I'm going to shake it all the way down to the bottom if I can. Take the top off, and you see, right here, I have a bottle of water. Because you just put this in your bottle of water. Put that in there, just like that. Make sure I get all of it out. Yeah, because all of it is good. It's just, it's good, man. It's good. I love it, especially when this orange is, this water is cold too. It's a wonderful thing. Honey, you just don't know. It's beautiful. Because I got this water nice and cold too, because I put this bottle in the freezer. You put the top on tight and shake. Oh yeah, shake. Shake, rattle and roll. Oh, just kidding y'all. Okay, and once it's all shaken up, open up the top, uh, and then you could have a wonderful little drink. Ah, delicious. So for me, this here was a good, and I think slightly healthier alternative to soda pop because this it doesn't have any kind of carbonation or anything and it's sugar free and the thing is this is something that they have not taxed at least I don't think they've taxed it or at least I hope they don't <laughs> well they can't now because the tax is repealed at least for right this second because we've won the battle the war still isn't over yet we still got one more major vote and that is tomorrow at 10 o'clock down at um, county um, board headquarters because tomorrow the whole Cook County Board including Queen Sugar herself Tony Prepwinkle yes is going to be showing up tomorrow to do a final vote now they did a vote today I don't know how come they do it got to do a second but this is what they're gonna do and I guess tomorrow when they do the second vote that's when this whole thing is actually gonna become law so around this time tomorrow I hope to be coming to you with a good good great and wonderful report because if this whole thing is officially repealed tomorrow then this beverage tax repeal goes into effect December 1st right after Thanksgiving just in time for Christmas so Christmas is gonna come early for all of us Cook County residents this year it's a beautiful day here in the county of Cook for all of us residents stand up Chicago we do have a victory thus far so um, that's where I'm going to leave it and be sure to like and subscribe and, and share this video. Let every single body know what is going on, what kind of goodness and beautifulism, if that's a word, that we have going on here in the county of Cook. Hopefully I'll see everybody tomorrow, but for now, peace and blessings to all.